Thank you, I guess. Uh, I would like to thank the previous speaker because it's going to make my life a bit easier uh, by explaining what is uh, GPS and navigation systems. So thank you for that. And I'll try to make it in 10 minutes. I speak, uh, well, I need to speak slower than usual, which is difficult for me. But uh, before we start, anybody heard about this company here, Technologies? Wow, more than expected. Uh, so I hope that uh, by the end of this presentation, you understand how probably most of you used our services or similar services at some point in your life. Uh, and I'm going to divide my presentation to three sections, as everything else in life. I'm going to explain what we do, who we are, what we do, and how we influence mobility and transportation. So uh, before we start, a question for you. What do you see here? And anybody can just shout. Thank you. Anybody else? More than that? OK. It's empty. That's not usual. So I'm going to help you a bit how we look at it uh, from our position as a, I would like to call it navigation or mapping company. We're more of a platform company today. So we look at the different attributes that are part of this reality, and we map them in order to help different use cases. One of them is autonomous vehicles and smart mobility, which we'll explain uh, more in a few minutes. So here, here is a, there is an argument with TomTom, -Tom, usually with Teleatlas, who is first. Uh, so uh, because there's nobody else here from TomTom, -Tom, we are first. We started in 1985 as a navigation technology. Obviously, GPS was not available for the, uh, for the public. It, was, it became available when Clinton was a president, and he opened it uh, to everyone. So uh, we started as a mapping. We started with digital mapping without GPS. In 94, we, we had the first uh, in-car navigation system. 2004, we introduced ADIS, advanced driver assistance systems within cars. So very car-oriented. We started community mapping before OSM. And before Google, uh, predictive cruise control, which is the first path to autonomous driving, 2009. And then location cloud. Something is missing here. In 2008, there was probably the biggest acquisition ever in the high-tech industry of 8.1 billion uh, by Nokia. Anybody heard about Nokia still? I think all of us had a Nokia phone at one point. And when Nokia purchased us, I think it was the highlight of, uh, of uh, Nokia. They used to be worth 70 billion when they bought us. Uh, just to be clear, in 2015, they sold us for 2.5 billion, meaning uh, 6 billion less than they bought us. So not a very good deal, unfortunately, for them. So 2015, we were purchased by uh, three car manufacturers, Audi, uh, BMW, and Daimler. And uh, they basically uh, created a consortium of uh, automobile automakers or uh, transportation manufacturers. And they uh, all want to use our services in a way that will make it a standard, uh, let's call it sensor, because navigation is a sensor, uh, for autonomous vehicles. So uh, different companies like Pioneer, like Bosch, like Continental joined throughout the way, some Chinese companies as well. And today, we're focusing not only on autonomous vehicles, but also on smart city and smart mobility. And I'll show how. So the company is working today. Uh, we mapped 200 countries, which is more than any other uh, mapping company. We have uh, more than 8,000 employees. Four out of five vehicles in uh, West Europe, by the way, have our navigation systems within the car. We have 400 vehicles with LiDAR that are collecting data in order to create those maps. Uh, we have a huge community of people. We use a lot of sources of data which we're purchasing or cooperating with companies in order to get. We're using probes. And over 100 million vehicles have our maps on board. There's never been a tipping point quite like this. A new digital era where man and technology fundamentally reconfigure their relationship to empower every aspect of our surroundings. Where we go from ride sharing to self-driving, from delivery to drone, from city planning to thinking cities, from street maps to an index of reality. This era is called the autonomous world. So uh, this is a, a short video which explains how we see it. So you know, a lot of this was again mentioned before. I'm not going to repeat all of it. But some examples, you know, we're moving urbanization, we're moving to mega cities, pollution is increasing, amount of cars is increasing. Uh, 
yeah, and it happened to you as well, now it happens to me, uh, the amount of resources that we're consuming is 1.7 times higher than what the Earth is producing. Right, so a lot of issues that we need to face, and we think that our location services or location platform can help users, but also companies overcome some of those challenges. And this is what we call the reality index. So we're not calling it maps anymore, we're calling it a uh, vision of reality. Because we're not just taking roads as we used to and direction of travels, but there is also much more information that is getting into this reality index that can help uh, overcome some of those challenges that we've seen a minute ago. So this reality index is also a change in our company because the reality index is just a small portion of what we call the open location platform. And the open location platform is basically a service, a cloud service, where every company that has location data, and we saw Lime before, for instance. Lime has a lot of location data. Almost every application today has location data. They can upload this to the open location platform, and everybody can use it. So they can open it to the public, but they can also leave it uh, there as a cloud. And everybody else can monetize or use the data in order to add value to their customers. And that's what we're trying to do. And as a company, we're also moving from a single use case company. We used to be navigation maps for cars. But now we see a lot of other use cases. So we're helping transportation and logistics. And I'm going to show a use case in a minute. Uh, media companies with the location-based advertising. Insurance company with user-based insurance, telco and utilities, retails, and obviously public sector, which is a big deal with smart cities, which is a buzzword today. But uh, yeah, so that's part of it. So let's start with our normal use case, navigation and guidance. And obviously autonomous cars are part of it. So, uh, you know, stuff like real-time traffic, which is a must in every application of navigation today, road sign validation, which can be while you're driving. And this is part of V2V and V2X because you need to get information on the spot from the cars on the road, on-street parking, hazard warning, and a lot of other use cases that are relevant for autonomous vehicles, but also for the hybrid situation, which is going to be probably in the next 10 years, where you have some autonomous, some semi-autonomous, and some uh, traditional vehicles, and you need to make sure all of them somehow work together in the, in the, in the city. Second use case, which we're targeting, is advertising optimization which will help both consumers but also stores uh, you know, in order to build a better uh, user audience, in order to make sure that the right people are getting into the stores that they need, and in order to make sure that we understand the audience. So we're targeting the consumers according to what they need and not just uh, working consumers. User-based insurance. This is another interesting use case because uh, you know, everything is uh, becoming user-based because I don't want to pay insurance for what other people did on the roads, right? So I want to pay insurance according to how I drive. And I want this to influence the way I drive. So this is another important use case. And we have some companies using location data in order to improve user-based insurance. And then the person who's driving the car is paying according to the way he's driving and not according to the uh, li price list that the company has. And the last one, which is interesting, which is also relevant to Slovakia, is the uh, next generation supply chain management. I don't know if you know, but uh, a lot of companies are losing a lot of time and actually losing equipment in the supply chain. Meaning if you need an engine to come from Slovakia, from one of the uh, OEM manufacturers to the, uh, to the garage in Germany, sometimes things are getting lost on the way or there is a, a lack of uh, uh, optimization of the time used because you don't know exactly when the train is going to come with the engines and when the ship is going to come with the, uh, uh, with the equipment as well. So we're trying to help them monitor everything end-to-end, -end, and that's where we're saving time and money for the manufacturers. And by the way, for all those use cases, my assumption is that uh, Galileo will definitely help both the users, but also uh, the companies that are using the services, because today the GPS system is not as accurate as you described. So that's interesting. This is, again, how we are not looking to sell our products, but how we are looking to add value to the customer by showing him how he can save money by using those services. Meaning, you know, you're going to save 3% in delays, you're going to save 15% in overdue exit port time, which is very expensive, by the way, and overdue entry port time, 35%. This is the overall what we're going to save you, and that's how we target the use case for the user and for the audience. So last uh, use case is end-to-end -end mobility. We as a company uh, took a different path two years ago, uh, where we said, OK, mobility as a service is part of what we do. And we all we cooperate with Virgin on the Hyperloop, but also we uh, 
acquired a local company based in Tel Aviv. It's called Here Mobility. It's actually part of the company now. And they uh, introduced a new application which is called SOMO, which is social mobility, which is basically a social application for ride sharing and ride hailing. So people can share their rides and the other people can join. So I, I urge you to download and have a look. And eventually we're going to have also mobility services within this. So it's going to be a marketplace for mobility services. So I'm out of time. Uh, one word on our partners, because we're not doing anything alone. This is just a list of some of the partners that work in those use cases that you've seen before. Hope that you know some of them at least. And this is where we see the smart city uh, idea in uh, 2050. So we have a memorandum of understanding with the Ministry of Dubai, and we're starting to work in those, uh, some of those use cases that you've seen before. And this is how we hope it's going to look like in 2050. I'm going to show only a few seconds of that. city AI of Dubai. In our city, no one owns cars, but rather requests one whenever they need it. Being fully autonomous, these vehicles enable many improvements to daily life, including en-route meetings that make the most of every journey. I use location intelligence and sophisticated algorithms to create one connected network that makes travel inside the city and to all over so the world just to show how smart transportation includes uh, you know, user transportation, also commercial transportation, drones, smart buildings, etc. So uh, because we're out of time, thank you.